What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Mutt Tips. I'm your host, Sean Taylor from the Made Up Theater. And before we jump in, make sure to like the video down below, comment with somebody you would like addressed in a future video, and as always, subscribe on YouTube down below to be informed of upcoming videos and live streams. Ring that bell. We are on the path to reopening Made Up Theater for in-house operations, so on that path, our Saturday night shows are now going to be broadcast on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. So tune in on any social media platform that you would prefer. But hey, let's jump into today's topic, the game of conducted story. When I first started improv way back in 2005, one of the most difficult games for me to play was the game of conducted story, because it's a game that really focuses on getting you out of your head and listening to your fellow cast members. And in addition to that, it's a game that requires energy and selling the story to the audience and to your scene partners. Your energy is infectious, and thus you want that energy that you bring to the table to infect the other performers in a positive way. But let's get into how the game works. This game was played pretty frequently on the now canceled show Improvaganza, but there's a lot of clips online and I'll put some in the description down below if you wanna see a full demonstration of the game. But the way it works is one person is designated the host or the conductor, and that person will be pointing back and forth between the cast members on stage. The cast members are in kind of like a semi-circle, you know, and uh, they are facing the conductor at all times. Their eyes are locked on that person. And when the conductor is pointing at somebody, that person tells the story. And when the conductor pulls their hand away, that person stops and the person they point at next picks up exactly where they left off. And together, they are going to tell a fully fleshed out story by you know, using the art of listening, using the art of reacting and building upon each other's ideas. This game is a great exercise for listening, practicing yes and, and practicing just getting to the, getting to the big moments of your narrative. As a quick demonstration, here's like a 30 second clip of myself and Ben Stevens playing the game of Conducted Story. So, Leonard pulled out his bald point pen and started to write his name. But what came out, not ink, it was blood. Blood from his past. It was somehow saved inside a pen. Leonard knew that this was his opportunity to change every thing in the world. So he took the pen and put the blood of his past into his present self, and then he went into a time warp. And he did it again and again, saying to himself, let's do the time warp again. Before I jump into some tips, first of all, this game I'm gonna mostly be focusing on more of an in-house presentation. So if you wanna play this game on Zoom, you know, because we are all improvising online right now, you very much can. So I'm gonna put a link in the description which emphasizes the use of the spotlight mode. So in this game, whenever someone is spotlighted on screen, treat that as though that person is being pointed at by the conductor. And then that person can switch to a different spotlight person and then that person carries on with the story. It doesn't flow as well as in person, but you can still very much play this game on Zoom. And I encourage you to try it out and see if you can bring the excitement of an in-house performance of this game to the virtual realm. Now let's get into some tips. So this game works best with no more than six people. Try not to have too many people on stage. It can be a little bit overwhelming for the host. Um, and in this game, as a quick little thing, I'm not gonna emphasize this too much. You can enforce eliminations. So eliminations can come in various forms, like maybe hesitating when someone gets pointed at, they don't jump into the story quick enough, or when somebody gets pointed at, maybe they don't complete a sentence or word correctly with like grammar or you know spelling in mind. Um, or if they keep talking when someone pulls their hand away, you know? Those are various eliminations you can enforce. I say eliminations can be fun in more of a show format. In class, I usually don't emphasize it too much unless I'm getting them ready for a show. So don't really worry about eliminations. If anything, treat it as a fun little addition to the game if you would like to raise the stakes a bit. Now some tips for the game. Those who are telling the story, a few things to keep in mind. First of all, keep it simple, silly, kiss it baby, because ultimately if we introduce too many weird plot elements, it's hard to balance them. Imagine each new development is a new ball that you're trying to juggle and when it becomes too much, the balls fall to the ground and a lot of offers get dropped, right? 
So treat these stories as like really simple. You know, it could be as simple as like a fairy tale that you would tell a child. Those types of stories generally aren't super complicated. They're not like Quentin Tarantino movies. They're very simple, sometimes very linear stories that, you know, emphasize a few characters. So when you're introducing characters, I try not to go more than about three. You know, you got a protagonist in there, the, the person we're following, the journey of this person or character, and then maybe there's an antagonistic person, the obstacle, the villain of the story, and then a third person can be various things. It could be a sidekick, a love interest, a mentor. You could go a few more than three, but I say be careful, keep it simple, limit the amount of people in this story because ultimately the more you introduce, the more opportunity for things to get dropped. Another big thing to emphasize in this game, and that's why this game is great as an exercise, is listening. This is great for practicing listening because you know, in improv, we sometimes like to plan stuff out in our head. Like, oh, this scene could go in this direction, this direction, this direction. But with this game, if you're planning stuff in your head, you ain't listening. And ultimately, if you ain't listening, you're gonna struggle in this game. So drop all ideas, just listen to the story. And when it comes to you, when you are pointed at, then at that point, contribute to what just happened. Yes, and the idea. Because on stage, when we're improvising, somebody will throw us an offer that we weren't expecting, but we react to it. We accept it into the reality and add on to it. That's what this game's all about. Yes, anding offers. So get out of your head. Don't plan it. Don't think about what will happen. I guarantee it 100% will not happen. Just listen and enjoy the power of creativity through the ensemble. Another big thing to emphasize is action, okay? Because in this game, three types of narrative techniques will come out. Description, dialogue, and action. Of those three, action is way more important and interesting. It progresses the story. A lot of times people will sometimes default to doing a lot of dialogue. Description sometimes happens, but it's not too common. Dialogue is big because dialogue actually feels safe, you know? because mistakes happen naturally when we're speaking, so it doesn't feel too much like an error if somebody messes up in dialogue. And I don't know, dialogue allows people to kind of slow it down a bit. This game isn't about slowing it down. We just need to keep pressing forward and keep finding new areas to explore. A great way to bring this story to an action moment is when you get pointed at, like throw in like a word like suddenly, just then. All of a sudden, you know, sudden is a great word because it brings it now to something that's meant to be important in your story, a new element, you know, or an old element returning. So focus on action, okay? Don't get in the pitfalls of doing too much dialogue or description. Action is going to help you not feel stuck. Action moves you forward. If you're teaching this game or facilitating this game, Something to pay attention to is if delay tactics are being implemented. And one of the most common ones, don't tell this to your students because if you tell it to them, you know, don't think of an elephant, they'll start thinking of it and they'll start using it. But sometimes a phrase that comes out a lot is decided to, okay? This happens a lot. Like instead of saying, Jerry went to the store, they would say, Jerry decided to go to the store. And deciding to do something means you're not doing it. You're planning it in essence. And in this game, we don't wanna get into planning mode because we're not progressing the story. We're doing setup when we should just get to the payoff. So if you say, oh, you know, Jerry decided to go to the store, then at that point you're gonna be like, so he grabbed his keys and he also grabbed his coat because it was raining outside and he made sure he had his wallet, his phone and his keys. And now it's just like, okay, this doesn't really add to the story. But if you say, Jerry went to the store, when he got to the store, he went to the milk aisle and he looked into the milk aisle and he grabbed himself almond milk you know stuff like that we're progressing it we're moving towards fun moments in the story and another thing is get into the story your cast members your job is to sell this thing as though it's the best story ever so first of all a few things presentation will go a long way so when you're in your like semi-circle setup on stage don't put your hands in your pocket don't cross your arms I always say put your arms behind you and lean in intently because that is going to show that you're invested in the story. You're leaning forward. And you know that's what people do when they're interested. They lean forward. So show that with your stage picture. 
Um, and you're all one head. So if like, if all six of you are doing like, one's doing this, one's doing this, one's doing this, well, it looks disjointed. So kind of have like a similar stage picture. Again, leaning forward, arms behind your back is a great way to go about it. Also, if you're teaching and hosting this game, really emphasize that everybody who is telling the story, their eyes are on the conductor. I sometimes see people like trail off or like look up towards the audience or just at some spot on the wall. And the problem is, is if you're not looking at the host, the conductor, then you're gonna miss moments when they pull their hand away, right? So just look them in the eye. Because also the conductor sometimes will give you some little things, you know? Like sometimes I do this as a host. This means I want them to speed it up. Cause this game sometimes it could go too slow and it just feels like it's not like exciting because the speed is too like, you know, contained. And it almost should feel like controlled chaos with this game. So sometimes I'll go like this to show, hey, go faster, go faster. Um, be aware that the host, the conductor, is in charge of the momentum of the game and the focus of the game, so give them your focus. To close out the video, I wanna give some insight into the conductor, because the conductor has a really important role. They are essentially introducing a lot of setup moments for comedy. Probably one of the funniest things about this game is that not one person is completing an idea. You point at person A and they're halfway through their sentence, you pull your hand away and person B finishes it. And sometimes because of the immediacy of this game, they finish it in a very strange, bizarre way, but it still fits and that's where the comedy comes from. Sometimes you pull away from somebody mid word and they finish with a word that was not what that person was going for. And that's funny. So as a conductor, Few things, like pay attention to some setup moments. I usually like to not let somebody finish a thought, you know, 100%. So if I'm pointing at someone and they say, uh, Gerald went into his closet and he reached into a trunk and pulled out A, don't let that person finish. Pull your hand away and let person B finish it. A machete, you know, or something like that. Because that now makes the game it makes it interesting because now it's an ensemble piece rather than a solo piece. And that concludes this episode of Mud Tips, everybody. Thanks a lot for checking it out. Again, if you enjoyed the video, you know, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out our live streams on Saturday night. We got one coming up on this Friday night as well, featuring the Mutt cast. If you subscribe, you'll be in the know. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll check you out next time for another episode of Mutt Tips. Bye. <laughs>